Alright, so this is in response to a video from Eric Orville a while back, and uh, I decided to respond to it because it actually in gave me some interest. Now, this is a video about deism and things like that, and while I'm not big into religious interpretations and how they connect to society and things like that. It's a subject that's been reintroduced to me. You see, I'm usually the kind of guy that's introduced more spiritualistic things because I have friends that are into that in real life. So that's kind of where I basically find that shit, but Religion's a subject that's been reignited into me. Like, I'm studying it a little bit more now because of what's been said, basically from Grog, also known as Eric Jacobs, and how he said that the masses are naturally religious. If we drop that religion from them, they usually go into TV. Journalists have become the new priests and things like that, and that's a position I had. A while back ago so it's kind of reignited that however what you said about how pantheons have been replaced with these monocentric monotheistic gods that's a subject that interested me because the whole Zoroastrianism thing kind of that kind of made me look back at everything I've basically studied about biblical texts and religious texts in general. It kind of gave a new foundation. And I thought that was kind of interesting because it got me studying again. History, storylines, mythology. And you got to admit, I've become recently a big fan of Neon Genesis Evangelion. However as of May, however, that hasn't really ignited that, because I knew that those little themes that they threw together, the little symbolisms, they're just symbolisms, they're just pretentious SWPL Film Studio Independent Film Festival shit. Like, nowadays we, as Grok said, we look at things as a mask. The postmodernism doesn't have a face, it's more of a mask. It can't be identified by a actual features, but lack thereof. So there's more symbolism in art. Everything's supposed to be symbolic. I took an art history class and basically it's like I mean, there's, like, different art history teachers, but they all point to really old f art and photos and photography and things like that. Even mythology in a symbolic way, that it symbolizes some shit. And you can look at it that way, but that's kind of a very rigid way to look at things. Looking at things as a metaphor. I mean, some people complain in school that, why is it that this can't just be this? This has to mean something else. And that's a normal frustration, because when you look at everything like a metaphor, it kind of fucks everything up. I mean, even me, like when I realized that Second impact in Neon Genesis Evangelion, that was a metaphor for World War II. It, it, I would have realized that a while back, or remembered that that's all that it meant, then I would have been severely disappointed, because I really think that the literal telling of that storyline was that much more interesting. And that really is how I look at things. I mean, some people like to psychoanalyze shit, make everything into this symbolic thing. I don't enjoy it. That retelling from, like, 
the director's perspective of Neon Genesis Evangelion, that really kind of bothered me because it basically turned the whole met storyline into this metaphor for a child growing up and puberty. And that kind of messed it up for me. Well, not really. I actually still enjoyed the series, and that didn't nearly castrate it. I'm still going to get excited for their rebuild film. Hold on. I'm gonna get really close and sexual. I gotta recharge this shit. <sighs> and after the meet of subject, I started looking back at mythology and these pantheistic religions. The one I'm introduced to most because of my art history class is pagan or Greco Roman mythology. Just the stuff near the Mediterranean. And I don't really know about those Norse or Celtic mythologies. Uh, nor am I really interested. You can you can introduce me to it and see if it also has this. But there's some aspect of it that I realize. Pagan mythology actually identifies with a cultural decline. Where Christianity and these kinds of religions basically start off with a paradise lost and a paradise found once more type of thinking. Where with Roman history, Rome's Roman history has to do with a lot of declines of various civilizations, various civilizational destructions, and the gods. What happens is that once Zeus took over, the Golden Age started, started, and then a Silver Age, followed by a Bronze Age, and then the Iron Age. And it becomes a descent, ultimately leading to a somewhat of a Ragnarok, which that's where shit goes crazy. You think Armageddon is insane? I think Ragnarok is pretty much worse. Because Armageddon seems to be more of a... Calculated destruction towards... A return to a paradise. It's where... Everyone else that doesn't fit into that... Gets that insanity followed by... An eternity of suffering. However, however, Ragnarok is total destruction, total decline. Kind of like what happens to those pagan cultures, because of course, cultural decline happens. Wow, man. That is really weird. I have like these really dark under eye circles, even though I go to sleep at 11 p.m. and I wake up at 7. It's no more awkward sleep cycles for me. I actually sleep like a normal person. I'm just not used to that because I wear glasses all the time. So it's like, this shit looks really weird to me. Like really hot but really weird. Because I can't, I can't think the whole creep guy thing is sketchy or you really works for me. So trying to make sense of all of this. Since I've been basically building up and building up and building up. My old perspective is that society has been going really bad and that we could possibly have a return to paradise or that it could be like a typical plot line starts off really stable, it builds towards a climax, and then it descends. Instead of the descent being a decline that brings us to destruction, instead of starting in peace and then ending in peace, it's starting from nothing and ending in nothing. So it's like, the climax really is the best, not the most chaotic, but us at our best. And 
it's one of those interpretations of storylines where we look at things in terms of starting off at a peaceful blank state situation, blank slate I mean, but state could also work, and then building up towards an ent highly entropic condition and then ending in that sort of blank slate, the neon genesis of Angelion, instead of a starting from destruction, building up to the best it can at the moment, the golden age, and then declining towards destruction again. And that part of mythology is really interesting. I want to study Norse and see if that kind of mythology, that pantheistic series of things, actually works actually applies there too, like there is a moment of destruction. All in all, it's very interesting. It's like a very interesting subject. Ah, I'm so fucking tense. This is the thing, when you start school again, for me, like, when I start school again, I basically... Before school, I'm all loose and I'm feeling good. When I started, I'm basically sitting around most of the time. Well, I sit around anyway, but I'm sitting around looking down at work, turning pages, writing, just on a downward state, and it really makes my shoulders all compress, all tense, instead of, like, relaxed. And I, re I really gotta, like, flex my shoulders, because... That kind of bothers me. Like, I also get into really bad habits when I start going to school again. But you know what? It's worth it. Because it's like... I get to socialize more. Because there's more... Social... Circles that are all interconnected and shit like that. So if I... If I get bored one place, I could go to another social circle and keep going that way. And... Talk to more people and shit like that. It's not like real life where all your little social circles are really disconnected and stuck in the matrix. So basically you can be hanging out with one person in one area and then another social circle in another area. And it's a mess, but that's because it's not like handed down to you. And I guess you can say that in some ways there's an advantage to that mess because... Basically, it's less like a prison. Anyway, to conclude all of this, because I'm really saying a lot, it's all about degradation. Do we start off in a paradise, degrade, and then move back to the paradise? Or do we start in destruction, move to a better place, and then all of a sudden we're back in destruction? It, it's really interesting. Like, if you can think about it, that's the biggest reverse in my view. That's the biggest change. I see us. Starting in destruction and ending in destruction now, as opposed to starting in paradise and ending in paradise. The whole thing is just really different for me. The curve has completely changed. And I think that it's a very complex way to look at something very simplistic. That basically, our fantasy structure isn't this pantheistic thing, but rather a, a really fucked up monotheistic thing, which isn't always bad. Monotheism isn't always bad now to realize it, but... It can change our perspective on things. Or it can't. 
I don't know. 